Hmm. I'll make some good coffee. What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to another King James video. Now, today we have a film camera thrift haul video. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys exactly what we have. But before we go ahead and do that, I wanna mention that this video is gonna be special for a couple of different reasons. One, I'm testing out my new vlogging setup. So originally, matter of fact, let me go ahead and grab it real quick. Every video that you've seen on this channel up until this point was this rig right here, this dinosaur. All right, folks, so this is the Sony A5000. Had the nice little flip up screen and it had that, you know, 16 to 50 kit lens, there's no battery in here. And then we had a Zoom H1 with a mic set up on top. And this was like the run and gun setup for the longest time. But now I'm shooting on the Sony A7 II and I also have a shotgun mic up on the top there. And hopefully it's gonna make the audio sound better. So if you guys already see a difference or if you hear a difference at least, comment down below and let me know what you guys think and what I can improve. Now I did mention this was gonna be a special film camera thrift haul because not only am I gonna show you guys my cameras and the stuff that that I got from the thrift haul, but I'm also gonna show you guys my process on how I take photos for uh, my website, how I sell that stuff, and go ahead and show you guys all of the gear that I use to achieve the photos, and then show you guys a little bit of the editing as well. So, but yeah, let me go ahead and drop you guys down really quick and show you guys what we have, because folks, when I say we went all out, I mean, <laughs> I really mean it. All right, folks, so here's a little quick sneak peek of what we got in the bag. I think we got a total of like 12 different point and shoot cameras and one SLR. And we also got some other streetwear stuff um, that I'm gonna be putting up on the website. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and do a pulling out of the hat trick type of thing. I'm gonna set you guys up with the camera and I'm also gonna show you guys uh, what cameras we have one by one. Here we go. They're probably like, what was that? <laughs> all right, you guys. Now, the first step when taking product photos, first of all, is getting my gear out and getting it ready. Now, for product photography or just stuff in general that I do for my website, I don't like to use too much gear. If anything, I try to keep it as minimalistic as possible. Now, with that being said, I use a total of three different lenses. The camera body that I use is the Sony a7 II, which is the camera that I'm recording with right now. So in a little bit, I'm gonna go ahead and move over back to the old dinosaur and we're gonna film um, the session here that I'm about to shoot with the A5000, A5, yep. Now as for lenses for the Sony a7 II, I really do only carry those three lenses. First of all is the zoom lens that's on the camera, the Sony FE 28-70, to 3.5 to I believe 5.6 optical stabilized lens. It's the kit lens for the camera and honestly it's one of the most versatile lenses. A lot of people bag about you know kit lenses that come with cameras. In my opinion, every digital camera that I get, I always get the kit lens that comes with it. Now, the other two lenses are prime lenses that I use, and these are them right here. Believe it or not, folks, these are not actually native lenses. They're not even made for digital cameras. Instead, these are both legacy lenses. These are lenses that were made for film cameras. Now, the first one I have here is the Sigma 
24 millimeter 2.8 OSS or not OSS sorry 24 millimeter 2.8 macro lens now the crazy thing about this like just like I mentioned it's a macro lens um, but it's a super wide angle lens so 24 millimeters it gives you this really unique and distinct look to your photos macro is absolutely essential when you want to get little details in the photo that you wouldn't be able to with say something like a 50 millimeter when you have that macro function on this and it opens up to 2.8 you're allowed to get close get personal get the detail and also still blur out some of that background so really really enjoy this lens i just have a little adapter um, from the canon fd to sony e-mount uh, which allows me to adapt the lens over to my sony a7 ii now as for the second lens again this is an adapted lens with that adapter instead this is a contax yatisha uh, yatisha yashica mount and this is the carl zeiss planar 50 millimeter 1.7 now the 51.7 in my opinion i want to get closer to the, the the product but still be able to get that fast aperture going uh, essentially what i want to do is just blur out the background with this lens and that's the only job this does um, otherwise most of the time it's the kit lens and the 24 millimeter this is just here primarily for certain angles and certain shots those are the pretty much the only three lenses that i use you don't need much when you want to do product photography all right so right now the sun is out and about it was a little cloudy and overcast earlier but the cool thing about um, their place here is that they have this cool little gazebo i guess you could say like a hut um, to where it, bro it blocks out all that sun so i have a really nice soft lighting situation it's against the house right here so the house almost acts like a soft box or something that i can bounce light off of so not using anything artificial uh, but one of the biggest things that I really, really highly recommend if you're going to do natural light stuff is to get a diffuser. Um, I don't have one, unfortunately, today, but we are using the house here kind of like a natural diffuser. Pretty much what a diffuser is, is that there's like a, uh, a harsh source of light and you want to make that really soft so it's even across. Get that diffuser, put it up with a stand or have somebody hold it so that you get nice, even light across. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys really quick the setup that we have and then we're going to go ahead and start shooting. Now, when it comes to product photography for me, I don't like adding in too much stuff into the frame. Like I know some people do, sometimes they'll put foliage or something that relates to the camera. But essentially what I want to do is show them what they're going to get. So usually what I'll do is simply I'll just drop the camera right dead center right here. And then I'll go ahead and use the angle. So that's essentially how I do it. Really simple. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and set the cameras up now. And then let's go ahead and get shooting. All right, you guys, so we just got done wrapping up with all that shooting stuff. Honestly, it was really fun with those two, and it's never a dull moment. But right now, we still got a ton of work to do. The day is not over. Um, we're going to go ahead and head over to Starbucks real quick. Let's grab a drink, sit down. Let's go ahead and edit the photos. I'm going to take you guys through my mobile editing process, simply because doing it on the computer, it takes a while. And open up Lightroom and to do all this stuff, of course, it's a process. But today, I'm going to show you guys my most simple but yet effective way how I edit my photos on my phone. So let's go ahead and head over there. Let's get something to drink. Can I get a grande iced caramel macchiato, please? What time does the lobby close tonight? The lobby closes, well, we just close in general at 9.30. 9.30, okay. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, no problem. 
All right, now editing my photos for the website. Now it's a simple process and I like to do it all on my phone just because it's a little bit faster. So mainly the apps that I use are going to be including Lightroom um, and another app called Visco. Lightroom is one of the main apps that I use, but because I want this to be a little bit faster and I have a large volume of work, that I need to get through, I'll go ahead and use Visco so I can use the same preset over all of them, create that preset on one image, and just pretty much apply them to all. So in a second here, I'm gonna show you guys exactly how I do it. All right, you guys, so let's go ahead and show you guys how I go ahead and edit the photos from a website. First things first, this is the app Visco. Um, I do have the premium membership on Visco, so I have all of the presets available to me. And so what I'll do is I'll go ahead and hit edit. Now once I hit edit here, here's the photo that's loaded up. As you guys can see, it's fairly dull, not too much color or detail going on. Uh, but what I'll do is I'll go ahead and go over to 06. 06 is the filter that I use most of the time for my product shots. Nice green tones, but you also get a lot of contrast for those blacks. So that's what I like to use. And here I will go ahead and adjust contrast a tad bit. I want that black to stand out, uh, and I'll go ahead and do that. I'll up up the sharpness here. And then uh, when you upload to Squarespace, what you'll notice is that they'll cut off the sides. So most of the time when you're doing product photos for your website on Squarespace, uh, you're only going to really get information in the middle. Saturation, I'll take it down a couple of notches here. We'll go to like 0.3. And then my highlights here, I think my shadows in this image need to be increased just so slightly. So we'll do plus one. All right, and then the biggest thing here for me is gonna be white balance. Now the white balance will give me the mood of the image because it was kind of sunny out there today. I can go warmer tone or I can go cooler. I'm personally feeling a little bit warmer, so I'm gonna go plus, uh, plus one here. And we'll adjust the green tint just a slight bit here. Matter of fact, let's do it more magenta, there you go. So that's pretty much the image, and the image is done there. And what I'll do is I'll drop some fade on it, and there you go. So there you have it, folks. That is the image right here. Uh, let's go ahead and save this as a recipe so so when you go here next time you can already have that preset you know, already set up for you so practically guys that's pretty much how I go ahead and edit all of my photos what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and have a session here currently 710 right now the lobby closes today here at Starbucks at 930 so I'm gonna try my best to get all these photos done um, and then get them uploaded on the website so let's grind it. Alrighty folks, now after about 30 minutes of grinding through on the cell phone, we got about a hundred something so images edited. So folks, here we go. Never underestimate the power of your phone. As you guys can see there, we have all of them done already. you guys so that's gonna wrap it up for my film camera thrift haul slash how I take product photography photos still don't know what the hell I'm gonna title this video but if you guys enjoyed it go ahead and give this video a thumbs up also subscribe if you're new to the channel and welcome over uh, if you guys have any questions on some of the techniques that I used in the video when I took those product photos feel free to comment down below and I will try my best to answer each and every single one of you guys as you guys know the gang is getting stronger we are around 27,000 subscribers right now so I really appreciate all the love you guys if you're interested in any of the products that you've seen in today's video and you want to cop some some dope pony shoots and some other streetwear stuff head over to my website kingjamesphoto.com I'm gonna go ahead and leave a link in the description below and that's where you can go ahead and purchase that stuff um, and help fund my future creative endeavors so folks I want to thank you again and you know what we do gang as always Minota gang ha!